more than any freshly launched shared world shooter to date. The Division 2 presents a polished, well-thought-out initial progression path, with at least some gas left in the tank after the fact. It's great gunplay, worthwhile loot, and beautiful worlds brimming with reasons to explore it kept me engrossed for the vast majority of my 70 hours of playtime. After its early momentum, it was a bit of a shock to discover that the difficult endgame content that I had been looking forward to in World Tier 4 gave me more of the same loot that I could find elsewhere, and failed to present any meaningful new mechanical challenges. The Dark Zone 2 was far less interesting than I would hoped it would be, but the good news is that these late-game shortcomings don't take away from the great journey that I underwent to reach them. The Division 2 gets so much more right than it does wrong. Things in The Division 2 seem to pick up right where the original post-pandemic story left off, both in terms of plotline and cover-based shooting. But it quickly becomes clear that many aspects of the gameplay have improved in meaningful ways. Gunplay is impactful, enemies react to being shot and die faster, and the world is teeming with enticing reasons to explore it. There are chests and collectibles around every corner, and this generous distribution of loot goes a long way in the context of The Division 2's phenomenally well-realized recreation of Washington, D.C. The series' familiar urban grid gives way to lush, open vistas and iconic monuments overtaken by vines. I never regretted indulging my inner explorer. There is a clearly similar progression structure to each of the 11 PvE zones as you're leveling up. You'll find a safe house or settlement, scour the landscape for caches, run missions, and capture a handful of control points. However, new activities are introduced as you progress, and the freedom to tackle these tasks in any order you wish keeps it from feeling like an obligatory grind. The missions themselves are well-crafted. Some even introduce welcome new environmental mechanics, like shooting a valve to douse flames or tracing a power cord to a destructible circuit in order to open a door. It's a pity that these unique elements aren't incorporated into the Division 2's lackluster boss fights, because they certainly could have used the variety. Bespoke boss mechanics are a staple of the shared world shooter and action RPG genres, so I was expecting to see some more elaborate encounters, especially in the Division 2's new strongholds, but came up with nothing more than apparently normal enemy archetypes with more health. This deprives the PvE of sorely needed standout moments and mechanical intricacy, and while bosses are a bit of a letdown, enemy variety elsewhere is significantly better than the first game. The expected assortment of enemies are all here, but some factions, like the Mad Max-esque outcasts, take entertaining creative liberties with their roles. Their rusher is a suicide bomber, their engineer controls a battle bot, and their heavy tries to crush your skull with a giant hammer. A sneaky improvement over the first game is that even the higher difficulty levels still throw plenty of lowly red bar grunts at you to sate your bloodlust. They melt quickly under fire, but pack a punch, and can spell trouble if they get behind you. The time to kill hardly ever felt spongy, thanks in part to visual tricks like bulky, destructible Kevlar that covers the tankier bad guys. As a result of these factors, combat remained demanding and fun, if a little predictable throughout. The Division 2 does a wonderful job of making its massive selection of firearms feel unique from one another by way of recoil patterns, rate of fire, and sound. Weapons and equipment can drop with beneficial modifiers called talents that take the loot from serviceable to genuinely interesting. The unhinged talent, for instance, adds a whopping 25% increased weapon damage, but causes your gun to kick like a mule. Got the target. I had loads of fun eking out every last drop of damage from my build with the help of the DPS meter, stat screen, and recalibration station, even if I did discover that shotguns were a bit too nerfed along the way. While gunplay is much improved, ability usage still feels clunky and ineffective, which doesn't inspire much exploration into these skill power builds. Specializations, on the other hand, do offer exciting bonuses like different grenades, passive effects, and the phenomenally fun to use signature weapons. The ever-present motifs of progression, exploration, and challenge do a wonderful job of gradually becoming more prominent as you progress through the approximately 22-hour main campaign. The main plot is serviceable, but the majority of standout story moments come in the form of short, direct, but effective subplots during missions. Agent Vital Signs, zero. There are a lot of excellent activities and progression that await you after the critical path, at least for a while anyway. You'll unlock powerful signature weapons, be introduced to dynamic world systems like the Priority Target Network, and even go up against a new endgame faction and invaded versions of previously completed missions. But this initial endgame is really more of an epilogue due to its brevity. It only lasts about six hours, 
Once you've completed all the invaded missions and progressed to World Tier 4, you lose the ability to replay them, and instead gain access to challenging variants of missions you've already played with no significant mechanical differences from the main campaign, and rewards that stagnate quickly, apart from the very rare exotic drops. Before you know it, you'll reach the gear score cap of 450 and be inundated with hundreds of randomly generated high-end items that aren't clearly better than what you've already got. This is where things get a little confusing because of the unintuitive and inconsistent ways in which The Division 2 allows you to circumvent this soft limit and continue making progress. I was shocked when most of the places that I would expect the 450 plus loot to come from, like daily and weekly projects, as well as challenge difficulty strongholds missions and high value bounties, instead, for the most part, only gave me more of the same 450 items that I could obtain from much easier sources. The good news here is the gear score isn't nearly as important as itemization when it comes to effective power. Progression after the gear score cap takes the form of identifying the most advantageous effects and distilling your horde of hundreds of high-end items down to the absolute best. There are also some other avenues for endgame progression that don't involve gear score at all. Hard difficulty capture points award crucial weapon attachments, and a multitude of enjoyably cryptic easter egg hunts bestow masks, backpack trinkets, and exotic weapons, which, might I add, are remarkably fun to use. Dark Zone is, sadly, the biggest letdown of The Division 2. The combat is fun enough, thanks to a relatively fast time to kill and stat normalization, but the risk-reward dynamic of the rogue system is a non-starter. At endgame, both world drops that go straight into your inventory and contaminated items that can be stolen by other players and must be extracted via helicopter are just more ubiquitous 450 gear. Without the consequence of potentially losing or stealing items that you care about, the Dark Zone becomes a much less attractive and dynamic PvP space. And bizarrely, completing the toughest challenges that the Division 2's Dark Zone has to offer, like surviving a Tier 1 manhunt or trading with a Thieves' Den vendor, award shockingly weak 250 gear score items. We couldn't fit all the topics into the review video, so to see my impressions of conflict PvP, check out my written review in the description. The Division 2 is more than just a strong foundation for future updates. It's a refined and intuitive shared world shooter with many dozens of hours of great content and progression that you can enjoy today. Its wonderful recreation of Washington, D.C. is a pleasure to explore, thanks to a generous amount of chests, collectibles, and dynamic open-world activities. Impactful gunplay makes it easy to care about the well-thought-out loot, and there are plenty of different builds to experiment with, even if some are better than others. Given Ubisoft's promised roadmap, it's hard to foresee the disappointing endgame challenges and Dark Zone issues being anything more than a temporary problem. But they certainly torpedo the prospect of sinking hundreds of hours in before the first update. Even so, for a shared world shooter so early in its life cycle, those problems aren't too discouraging. And in terms of content, The Division 2 is one of the strongest launches the genre has seen yet. If you enjoyed the review, shoot me a follow on Twitter at Thuggin Duggin. And for all things The Division 2, keep it right here on IGN.